All right, so my, um, whoops, presentation, how do you go back? <laughs> so my presentation was titled The Effective Self-Assessment on Student Learning. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about what my project entailed and what else I did um, it for the project. Um, so for my introduction, I, put, I researched um, the effect of self-assessment on student learning. Um, and this is an area of, of focus that involves teaching and learning um, for the students. Um, first, self-assessment for the kids. It shows them what they know. It shows them kind of what they can still be working on. And then as a teacher, it shows what do the kids know or what do they think they know, which could be two very different things, um, which can help me with my teaching and whether I need to reteach something or um, if we can just kind of move on. It's a good formative assessment. So like I said, my question was how does self-assessment affect student learning? My rationale for this, I had um, a couple things here. For one, um, throughout the other classes that I've been taking, I've noticed that self-assessment was something that I could improve on. Um, it's something that I didn't really use very much in the classroom. Um, and also, like I said, kind of it allows the students to take responsibility of their own learning, which is um, important, especially for middle school students, to start taking that responsibility of what they know um, and what they can still learn. Um, and my area, my area of focus was in my locus of control because I can plan the lessons and I can plan the self-assessment, so it was easy enough. So the overview, I used my two sixth grade classes. I teach two six, two seven, and two eight, so I chose my sixth graders for this. Um, my first class was the experimental group, and my second group was the um, control group. So the only difference was the experimental group, they um, used the self-assessments throughout their units, whereas the control group did it. The instruction was exactly the same. Um, the only difference was the self-assessment versus no self-assessment. Uh, I used three kinds of quantitative data, um, the pre and post test, which I'll talk more about these later. Um, the actual self-assessments themselves were part of my data, and then a questionnaire at the end that I gave to my um, experimental group only. So those are my three um, pieces of data. My research took place here at Christian Academy in the middle school. Like I said, I used my two sixth grade groups. Um, they were all between 11 and 12. Um, I had 33 students total, 15 in the experimental, and 18 in the um, control. And the study lasted about six weeks, which was three units. I had a review unit and then two um, regular units in my study. So for my um, research project, we did a literature review. And there were three main points that I found throughout all of the research that I had to do for the review. Um, I asked, what is self-assessment? What are the effects for students? And what are the effects for teachers? Um, so for what is self-assessment, I took a quote from um, Bowd, and he said he defined it as the involvement of students in identifying standards and or criteria to apply to their work and making judgments about the extent to which they have met these criteria. So I kind of touched on that earlier. Them taking responsibility of what they know, what they think they know, and what they kind of should know. Um, for students, a lot of the research from the literature review is showing that it encourages student participation and improves confidence and self-perception. Um, and for teachers, it's helpful in lesson planning. The students are more engaged when they're kind of taking that own responsibility. Um, and when students are engaged, it means less acting out in class, um, which is a better climate um, for the teacher. So those were the three main things that I got from my literature review. All right, I know there's a lot of words on here, sorry. Um, so for the data collection, like I said, I have quantitative data. I had three pieces of it. My first one was the pre and the post test. Um, so both my experimental and my control group took the exact same pre-tests and the exact same post-tests um, and I compared the difference between those pre and post-tests, so the means of the pre-test versus the mean of the post-test, um, and I compared that difference with the control and with the experimental group as my um, one piece of quantitative data. The second I used were the self-assessments, um, and the self-assessments that I did, some of them were exit slips and um, and starters, but for the most part, I used the um, Flickr app, which some of you have seen. Um, and what I did was I did a ranking, kind of like a self-ranking scale for them. One was I don't get this at all. Four was I feel really good about it. Um, so I would ask them every now and then to rank themselves using these, um, and it stored all of the their answers on my 
iPads was handy. Um, and so what I did with those is I looked at the beginning of the unit, how they ranked themselves versus the end of the unit to kind of see if they were taking it seriously, um, which they did. They were all either the same at the end or they were better. So that shows that they were at least taking it seriously. Um, and then at the end I did a student questionnaire just for the um, experimental group. And it had, um, there were eight statements on there, four positive and four negative, and they were on a Likert scale. Um, strongly disagree to strongly agree, um, just to kind of get their opinions on how they felt the student, the self-assessments helped them throughout the units. And I have more on that stuff later. Um, more of my data collection, again, 33 students, six graders. Um, there was a pretty even number of boys and girls, so that didn't have too much of an effect. Um, I did receive consent from all of their guardians and um, kept them confidential throughout the whole thing. Um, so my methods. The instruction, like I said earlier, was the exact same for both classes. The only difference, like I said, was the experimental group got the self-assessments. The control group did not. Um, so a few times throughout the unit, the experimental group got a self-assessment with the clickers or an exit slip where they ranked themselves one to four. Um, both classes took the same pre-test and the post-test before and after the units. Um, and there were three units, and then at the end, we did the questionnaire. So I kind of said all that already. Um, I did not feel like there were any ethical challenges in my research study. I didn't give one group the answers to the test and the other not the answers. So they all had the exact same um, instruction. The only difference was a self-assessment. And uh, to keep their confiden confidentiality, I didn't use any of their names in the data. They were all just kind of numbers by that point. <coughs> all right, so here begins my results, and I have a bunch of different charts on here. Um, so this one is the pre-test and the post-test results. Um, each of the different colors is a different unit, so review unit, unit one, unit two. Um, and on all of them, I was glad that this happened. The experimental group had a higher difference between their pre-test and their post-test than the control group, which kind of showed me, hey, maybe the self-assessments did work. Um, so yeah, they weren't like a, a ton different, but there was a difference between them. Um, this is these are the charts for the self-assessments, which was kind of difficult making these. Um, but the brown for both of them, so this is the review unit, and this is unit one, are the only charts I put up here. The brown is how the students rank themselves at the beginning of the unit, and then the yellow is how they rank themselves at the end. Um, so you'll notice it's way heavier on the didn't feel so great at the beginning of the unit, way heavier on the, hey, I get this, towards the end of the unit. Um, so it showed they were taking the self-assessment seriously, and they really felt like they were understanding more by the end of the unit than they did at the end, uh, which kind of went along with how their test scores panned out. Um, and here's the data for the student questionnaire, which I thought was kind of fun to look at. Um, the top chart are the positive questions. They were things like, um, did you enjoy the self-assessments? Did you um, feel like you benefited from them? That kind of stuff. The negative questions were, the self-assessments didn't help me at all. I didn't learn anything about myself in the self-assessments. So those were the kind of negative questions I used. Um, so it's pretty obvious, for the most part, the positive questions, they agreed with them. They felt like they benefited from it. The negative questions, pretty obvious. They didn't agree with those negative statements. They kind of liked the self-assessment and they felt they were helpful. So that was reassuring and encouraging to see um, those responses. And I didn't say this earlier. The reason that I did the positive and the negative questions was because there's always those students who all the way down will just circle four. And you can't really do that when there's two totally opposite questions on there. So that was my reason. Um, for the results for subgroups, the only subgroup that I had in my class were, uh, was gender. I didn't have any um, English language learners or um, any other kind of subgroups to choose from. So I chose gender, and I didn't really feel like that played any kind of a role. Um, the boys scored, had a higher difference on the first and third, the girls on the second. So I don't really think that that had much of a role in my data. Um, so, what is the effect of self-assessment? I found a couple, well, a lot of things, but two things I'm going to mention. Obviously, it had a positive effect. The scores were higher for the um, self-assessment group. 
And um, this also proves that it increases student learning. Um, and I put down here the control group, it didn't, they didn't perform poorly. The experimental group just had greater differences. So I feel like they still all learned, but the um, self assessments were beneficial. Um, so, a couple actions to take with this. Obviously, it shows that I need to be using it more in the classroom, which is what I was kind of planning to, the data I was kind of planning to get at the beginning. Um, if I had gotten completely different results, maybe I'd be like, oh, I don't, I'm not going to put that in my classroom. But So it shows I need to do this more often. Um, and also, just kind of thinking through everything that I was doing and reflecting on the project, implementing other kinds of self-assessment would also be beneficial instead of just the ranking scale every now and then. For example, um, weekly self-assessment journals that they could do, like on Friday, hey, write a paragraph about what you learned this week. Tell me what you don't understand from this week. Um, and also just the daily starters could be quick and simple. Do this starter and then at the end, how do you feel like you remembered our material from yesterday or what questions do you have to ask me from yesterday? Um, so they'd be quick and simple, um, just activities for them to do to kind of reflect. Um, and for sharing the result, obviously I'm sharing them to the department here. Um, but other, three other ways that I could share them are with the other world language um, teachers in the elementary and the high school here. Um, even though we don't all teach the same subject, it's still beneficial for all teachers. But it would be neat just to talk to the other world language teachers and kind of see, this is what I'm doing in my classroom. How can we kind of tweak this and make it better? Um, also sharing it with administrators, just to kind of get them on board with increased self-assessment, maybe talk about it in some meetings, just to kind of say, hey, this is really working. We should probably all kind of start doing this so the kids are more comfortable with it. Um, and I put, I can just make them accessible to people by maybe putting the research on a blog. Teachers are always looking for different blogs of different things. Um, so just by sharing it to whoever wants to search for it and find it. And that is all I have. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, as far as the collecting the pre or the self assessment data, did you find it took a lot of time on your class? Um, it really didn't, especially with the clickers, how quick and easy they are. I just pass them out. Okay, put up A if you feel good, don't feel good, D if you feel great. Just ask them a quick question, scan it, and it's in there. And I don't have to collect it. It's stored in my in the app. So and it's really the clickers, they collected it pretty well. Oh yeah, it was great. The kids liked it too. They were they always thought it was fun, so that was good. Any other questions? How did the kids respond to having to do an assessment that wasn't actually graded? Um, I don't think they actually thought of it as an assessment, even though I called it self-assessment. Um, they never grumbled. They just kind of, okay, this is how I feel, and they're done. So they never, I don't think they actually thought of it as assessment equals test kind of thing. So that was nice. Any others? Is this something you'll continue to do in your classroom? Planning on it, yeah. Yeah, it's quick, it's simple, it's beneficial, so. Awesome. Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So where are you going to pay us? <laughs>